Glory to God. Yes. Well, I've got my gorgeous wife with me today, and we are so excited. And you know, we celebrate Easter every day, yes, we not do. just on Easter Sunday morning, but we celebrate it every day. We got saved the same week back in 1978. We did not know the other one had gotten saved when we first got saved. But we gave our heart to Jesus, and when we did, our life took a whole turn. And we walked down a road that we're still traveling on, yes. and we're both still as excited about Jesus as we were the first day we knew we were saved. Glory to God. Amen. And I believe this day, Father, I thank you for every person watching, Jesus. every home, every family. Father, I thank you right now that as we open your word today, that all of our lives are going to be changed in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God forevermore. You want to sit down while, or do you want to stand up? I'll sit. While You'll sit. Glory. Yeah. Is that all right? Give us. We didn't practice this. Hallelujah. But I'm going to start out ministering, and then my wife is going to come after me and minister. But I want you to open your Bibles this morning, if you will, to John chapter 20. John chapter 20. And I don't usually tell the names of my titles of my sermon, I mean the titles of my sermon, but this morning I've entitled this one, He's Coming to Your House. Hallelujah. And I believe that today He's coming to your house, wherever you are, and I believe He's coming today. So let's look at John chapter 20, and let's look at verse 1, and I'm reading out of the Passion Translation, and it says, very early on Sunday morning, before sunrise, Mary Magdalene, now this is that first Easter Sunday morning, that first Easter Sunday morning that Jesus had been crucified on Friday, and the disciples were all afraid and all hiding, but it says very early on Sunday morning before sunrise, Mary Magdalene made her way to the tomb, and when she arrived, she discovered that the stone, the stone that sealed the entrance to the tomb was moved away. The stone was moved away. I believe that there are hindrances in people's lives that are going to be moved away today. I believe the financial hindrance you've been facing is going to be moved away today. Oh, I'm about to take off running. Glory to God. I don't know about you, and I, we pray that the anointing of God that we feel and sense and, and experience right here as they were just singing that last song, and, and I'm going to just tell you right now, that anointing is resting on us, and, and it makes me want to just shout and run and holler, but I can tell you right now, I believe it from the bottom of my heart that that every stone, every hindrance, every obstacle you've been facing for years is going to be rolled away. Glory to God. It's going to be moved out of your way. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So look at verse 2. So she went running as fast as she could to go tell Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved. She told them, They've taken the Lord's body from the tomb, and we don't know where he is. <clears throat> now listen at me. This is John. This is the book of John. John was writing the book of John, and this is John that's talking about himself saying the other disciple that Jesus loved. Listen, can I share this with you? Jesus loves you no matter who you are. Jesus loves you even if you've never given your heart to him. Jesus loves you so much that he laid down his life. That's why we're celebrating Easter this morning. When you and I were in our sin and all of our drugs and alcohol and in all of that debt, Jesus loved us. He laid down his life for us. He didn't know us, but he, he laid down his life for us. Glory to God. And he loves you. Glory to God. And... Uh, and so, and it says, they've taken the Lord's body from the tomb, and we don't know where he is. This proves they had no clue of what the scriptures had prophesied, of what the scriptures had said was going to take place. They didn't have a clue of what was going to happen there. I mean, Jesus had been walking with them for three and a half years. Jesus told them that he was going to be crucified, but on the third day he'd be raised again. They knew that the, the, the old covenant had talked about it, and the prophets had foretold that he was coming and be the one, but yet on that first Sunday morning that he was supposed to be raised from the dead, they didn't believe it. 
They didn't believe that he was going to be raised up. And they thought somebody took him. And so they look at this now. Peter and John, the disciple that Jesus loved. Hallelujah. That's me. He loves me. He loves you. Praise God. And they started out together. Look at this. But the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. Now listen. John was known as the apostle of love. The disciple of love. He was known as love. He was known as, as a loving individual. And he wrote about love in 1 John. And he wrote about love. He, he talked about love. He, 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 in his book, he gives a lot of descriptions of when Jesus was talking about love and what love really is. And so Peter, though, was an individual that really moved on his emotions. I mean, Peter was known to be spontaneous. Peter was known to move out of how he felt. In, a, in other words, what Peter said was, you know, Peter said, well, Jesus, if it's really you, bid me to come. Now, nobody else said that. Jesus said, come. He stepped out of the boat, and before he could get to Jesus, he started looking around, and his feelings changed. He, I, I, I can imagine, he'd say, what am I doing out here? And he began to sink. But Jesus reached out and grabbed his hand. Peter said, Peter said, uh, you are the Christ. And then Jesus thought, okay, you got this, boys. And he began to tell Peter and the disciples that he was going to be arrested and crucified and dead, but he's going to be raised again. And Peter said, not so, Lord. He rebuked the Lord. And, and Jesus said, get thee behind me, Satan. So Peter, listen to this now, Peter moved out of his feelings or really out of his emotions. But when I read this passage, it says that John outrun, outran Peter. So listen to this. No matter what you go through, no matter what you're facing, love always surpasses emotions. Love always will overcome our feelings. You can't be moved by your feelings. You can't be moved by your emotions. You've got to let the love of God overcome how you feel and overcome because love will always surpass emotion but now listen it listen at the next scripture i love it look at this and look at verse five he said he didn't enter the tomb talking about john but peeked in <laughs> he peeked in <laughs> and he saw only the linen clothes lying there then Peter came behind him, and look what Peter did. He went right into the tomb. Glory to God. Peter said, I'm not peeking in. I'm getting in with everything I got. I'm going to go in there. I'm going right on in the middle of it. Listen, too many Christians today are trying to peek into the anointing. They're trying to peek into the Word and get just a little bit out of it. They're, they're still trying to walk on the wide part of the narrow path. There still there are a lot of Christians today that are walking with one foot in the world and one foot in the church, and they're peeking into the things of God. And I can tell you right now, you don't need to peek into things of God. You need to jump in it with both feet. You need to be as excited about God right now. And Jesus, you need to jump in with both feet. Glory to God. And it says, Then Peter came behind him and went right into the tomb, and he noticed the linen clothes laying there. And see, another thing that this shows me, this shows me here that Jesus' disciples, there was a diversity in them. They were not all the same. Isn't that good? Yeah. They, they were not all the same. You know what that tells me? Hashtag agape strong. We are better together. Hallelujah. So Jesus had different disciples, and they all had different personalities. They all had different backgrounds. And I believe Jesus was out there saying, hey, hashtag agape strong, guys. We're better together. Hallelujah. Are y'all with me? We are better together. And look at verse 7. But the burial cloth that had been on Jesus' head had been rolled up and placed separate from the other clothes. Now that makes a, that makes a significant statement. Not to us Westerners, but it makes a significant statement to Jewish people when they would read that. Why? Because at a meal... When a person got up from the table, especially the head of the family, especially at Shabbat, when, a, when, a, when the head of the family got up to leave the table, and if he was finished, then he'd just lay his, his napkin on the plate. But if he wasn't finished and he was coming back, oh, glory to God, 
if he was coming back, he'd fold that napkin up and he'd lay it there beside the plate. Jesus, when he was raised from the dead, said, hey guys, I'm coming back. He folded that napkin up. And those Jewish boys going in that tomb, glory to God, they knew exactly what he was saying. He folded that napkin up and he said, boys, I'm alive, I'm here, and I'm coming back. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you today, he's coming back. Glory to God. And then verse 8 says, then the other disciple, and that's talking about John, who reached the tomb first, went in, and after one look, he believed. Isn't that awesome? After one look, John looked in there and he believed. See, all you got to do is just get one good look of who Jesus really is. And you'll believe for the rest of your life. Hallelujah. For until then, listen to this now. This this is what is so amazing about this. For until then, they hadn't understood the scriptures. Look at this. It's right out of the Bible. For until then, they hadn't understood the scriptures that prophesied that he was destined to rise from the dead. Puzzled, puzzled Peter. That's what we could call him, puzzled Peter. Puzzled Peter and the other disciple then left and went back to their homes. Listen, they had no clue of what resurrection was all about. We want you to know today what resurrection was. Is all about, don't we, darling? Amen. 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 Glory to God. (laughs) All right, I'm going to sit down while you share. Yeah, uh, Pastor and I were praying the other morning, and uh, there seemed to be a lot of activity on the word resurrection. So I started studying the word resurrection to see what all it meant, and then the Lord began to uh, take me over to uh, John eleven twenty five, where Jesus was talking to Martha. And um, this is after Lazarus had died. Well, you know, uh, Martha, she was all fearful and uh, was looking at her surroundings. She was being controlled about what she was seeing, and she was being controlled by her fear because Lazarus had died. And so what we don't want to do today as we're going through all what we're going through is to look at your circumstances Come on now. and to and to be motivated by fear and uh, because Jesus is here to take care of us hallelujah so um, he we need to keep our eyes on Jesus so Martha says I know he'll rise again in the resurrection of the last day. And Jesus said back to Martha that he had all the power over life and death. So we've got to realize how much power we have if we're saved. We have that same power living on the inside of us. And so we don't need to be looking at our circumstances or be motivated by fear right now. And so... Martha was limited by her faith because she was looking at her surroundings and motivated out of fear. And um, so Jesus said to Martha, If thou would believe, thou shalt see the glory of God. And that's what the Lord's trying to tell the body right now. If we'll just believe, we're getting ready to see the glory of God like never before. Jesus prayed to the Father, and it, he said, But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. See, those people that were around them, uh, that were around Martha because of what she was going through, you know, they weren't believing either. So Jesus had to tell her, you know, it's me. Just believe. It's me. And so, as Jesus has told us over the years, just believe, just believe. Listen to my word, listen to my word. He's been telling us things forever and ever, if you're a Christian. Yes. Or even if you're not a Christian and you want to invite Jesus into your heart today. 
But now he says, if you'll just believe, I'm getting ready to show you the glory of God. Mm. And he did. He went over to the grave and they moved the stone. He said, just move that stone away, just like Pastor was saying a while ago. Just move that wow. thing. Move that thing out of my life. I want to see the glory of God. Glory. So as we go forth in this resurrection time of recovery and re reactivation and all the things that resurrection means, we're getting ready to see the glory of God like never before. If we don't be moved by our circumstances. Now, the word resurrection means to rise again. And then as I was studying what resurrection means, there are words, synonyms, that mean the same thing as resurrection. Glory. And through every one of these words, it means resurrection, if you'll look it up. And uh, it means revival. And we believe that this nation is getting to rise again from the shutdown. Yes. Glory! Just like Lazarus. Yes! And the people are going to begin to see and believe like never before. We believe that we're going to rise again from the disuse. You know, the body of Christ has been like shut down. My, my, my. But we're getting ready to be used again in revival. Restoration. This is another word that re uh, resurrection means is Restoration. We believe that everything the devil has stolen from you during this shutdown is going to be uh, restored to you. It's the great awakening. Yes. The great awakening. We've been praying for the great awakening here for almost three years here at the church. And we believe. We're some of those that believe that we're going to see the glory of God. In fact, we've already seen a touch of the glory of God in our services. It also means to reactivate, mm. to, re to be resurrected to life again. Nothing missing, nothing broken, glory. nothing lacking. Yes. We believe in the resurrection of the rebirth. The renewal of everything. And we cannot settle for what's going on right now that's tearing down and killing our economy. We cannot settle for that. Now, the last word here that I want to share with you is recovering. It means to come back. So what we need to start doing is shouting... I'm coming back stronger than ever before. I'm going to believe stronger than ever before. Yes. My, fan my finances are coming back stronger, stronger than, than ever, ever before. before. And we should shout that my business is coming back stronger than ever before. And there's going to be a great healing in this nation because the word says that if my people will pray and turn from their wicked ways, that he'll heal our land. And there are many, many, many people around the globe that have been praying to the Lord. People that never prayed are praying now. Mm. Also, it means improvement. We're going to come out of the shutdown with great improvement. Glory to God. Now... If you remember King David in the book of Samuel, verse, uh, chapter 30, verse 8, David came back to Ziglag, and everything was burned down, and all of the women, children had been taken, and he was, he was devastated. But he went to the Lord, and many of us have gone to the Lord this time, and we asked the Lord, Lord, what should we do? And the Lord told David, you pursue. Don't stop now, but you pursue. You go on. So he took 400 men. Two of them had to stay back. 
The other two went with him. But when they got down to the creek of Bazaar, they found this young Egyptian boy who was an enemy of theirs. And the little boy said, you won't kill me. I'll tell you where the enemy is. And so David and his men fed the little boy. The little boy came back to life, got his energy back, and David and his men went on and they pursued all that the devil had stolen. They recovered all. He, they recovered all. So I'm telling you today that we're going to recover all if we will keep our eyes on Jesus and believe like Martha did after she saw everything moved. See, this virus is being moved out of our way yes. right now. The, the, the numbers that they told us we're going to be are not. And so we got to keep our faith in the Lord. We got to keep our eyes on Jesus. And we got to know that resurrection means again and again and again. We're getting ready to see the glory of God if we'll just keep our eyes on Jesus and believe. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Amen. Men, we're going to recover all. Hallelujah. I'm coming back stronger. Our finances are coming back stronger. Yes. Your business is coming back stronger. Glory to God. Your family is going to come back stronger. This economy is going to come back stronger. Yes. Hallelujah. Why? Because we're believing for resurrection. We're believing that it's all going to be raised up again over and above what the enemy has been trying to do, trying to shut down what God has already being, doing, have been, being done. Glory to God. And because Amen. Jesus is the way maker, you need to start praying for the steps. You know when Moses brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, they, all they saw was their enemy in the back and the sea in the front. They couldn't see the steps that were under the water. But once the water separated, the steps were there. And now that this thing's going to be moved out, God's going to give you the steps to do for the future. Because they were on a mission. God had a mission for them. He's got a mission for the body of Christ. And we've got to start doing what God's called us to do. <laughs> Amen. 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 <laughs> I'm telling you right now. And I believe he's giving, he's giving you steps right now. And I believe before this day's out, some of you have been crying out, God, I need a step. I need to understand what my next step is. I need to know if I'm supposed to do this, if I'm supposed to go here. Am I supposed to continue where I am now? And I believe that because you're tuned in today, I believe that the Holy Spirit is going to rise up on the inside of you and he's going to give you that step today. And he's calling your name right now. See, you got to understand that when, when they left the tomb that day and Mary came to the tomb and as she was there, you understand this, she got to the tomb and she went back to the tomb that day and she looked in and there were two angels there. And she said, where have y'all laid him? Where have you put him? And the angel said, he's not here. He has risen. Glory to God. And one translation says, what are you doing looking for the living among the dead? And do you know there are too many people today looking for the living among the dead? And I can tell you right now, if where you are is not alive, if where you are doesn't add to you, if the people around you is not adding to you and lifting you up, then you need to be looking for some folk that are alive, glory to God, some yes, folk that yes. are alive, and they want to speak life into you and not pull you down and always trying to take from you rather than, rather than trying to give to you and to bless you. And then she turned around, and when she turned around, she's crying. And there's a man standing there and says, why are you crying? And Mary, thinking that he was the gardener, said, sir, if you know where he is, would you please tell me? And then, she, and then all of a sudden, it was Jesus, and she didn't recognize him, but, she, but he said, Mary. Yep. Mary. He said, Mary. And when, she said, when he said Mary, her eyes were open 
to see who he was. He's saying Bill. He's saying Sally. He's saying John. He's saying Tony and Vi. He's saying Jim and Kathy. He's saying Charles. He's saying Chris, Christy. He's saying Troy, Jennifer. He's saying whoever your, Sue, whatever your name is. He's calling your name today. And he wants you to listen because he wants to raise you up and take you to the next level and take you beyond what the enemy's trying to do in your life now. Her eyes were open and she recognized that it was Jesus and she went to take hold of him. And Jesus said, Mary, do not touch me now because I've not ascended to my father yet, but here's what I want you to do. And he said, I want you to go and I want you to tell my disciples to go into Galilee and I will see them there. Woo, glory to God. He said, I will see you there. And he said, because I, listen to this now, this is so powerful because he goes on and he says, I'm going to my God and my father. But then he said, and I'm also going to your God and your father. See, when Jesus hung on that cross and he says, it is finished, and he breathed his last breath, and then he went to hell so that we don't have to go, and then on that third day, the power of the Holy Ghost reached inside and raised him up from the dead, and then he said, I'm going to my God, my Father, but then he made a powerful statement in John, he, he said, but I'm going to your God and to your Father, you tell my disciples that I'm going to their God and their Father, listen, he's not just the God of Jesus and the Father of Jesus. He's your God. He's your Father. You may not have known your Father on this earth. You may not have had a good relationship with your earthly Father, but I'm telling you right now, your Father knows your name. He knows where you are. He knows what you're dealing with. And then the Bible says in John 20, Hallelujah. And then the Bible says in John 20, I've got to read this. Listen, it says, And that evening the disciples gathered together, and because they were afraid of reprisals from the Jewish leaders, they locked the doors to the place where they met. <coughs> Excuse me. But suddenly Jesus appeared among them. So in other words, they were confined to their home. <laughs> We can't be here today. You can't be here today. And we can't be together today because of, uh, of what's going on in our world. But it says they were in their house. They weren't in Jesus' house. They weren't in the church. They were in their house. And guess what? Jesus showed up. Hallelujah. He's, gonna, he's showing up. I believe he's already showing up at your house today. And he's going to show up at your house. He's going to heal your marriage. He's going to give you an answer. He's going to move mightily in your children and turn their lives around. Hallelujah. I saw, I saw something the other day. I just thought about it. One of these parents said teachers ought to be paid a million dollars a year. When are they going to open that school back up so my kids can go back to school? They, they had a better appreciation of teachers. But listen, I believe God is showing up and ministering to you. But now listen to this. i got to read this to you. Listen to this. He said, but Jesus suddenly appeared. He didn't open the door. He, he didn't knock on the door. He just appeared right there in their midst. He's where two or more gathered together in his name. There he is. Woo, glory to God. There he is in the midst of them. If it's just two of you at your home right now. If it's you and you're watching us, that's two. That's three. That means he's in your midst right now. But listen to what he said to them. Listen to what he said to them. He said, peace to you. Then he showed them the wounds in his hands and his side. And they were overjoyed to see the Lord with their own eyes. And listen to this now. Jesus repeated his greeting again, peace to you. He's saying the same thing this Resurrection Sunday. This Easter Sunday, he's saying, peace to you, peace to you, peace to you, peace to you. No more fear, no more worrying, no more complaining. Peace to you. Glory to God. But now listen, this is so powerful. Listen to this. 
One, one of my board members of J.B. Whitfield Ministries, Jim Palmer, sent me this the other morning. And when he sent it to me and I read it, it exploded on the inside of me. Because when Jesus showed up, look, he said, peace to you, peace to you. And then he, he said, just as the Father has sent me, I am now sending you. Hallelujah. Listen to me, church. The world doesn't have hope. We do. And Jesus is saying to you this Easter Sunday morning, as the Father sent me to this earth, I'm sending you. Now, you may not be able to go out like you will be. We believe it's turning. And so quickly, you, and, and soon we'll all be able to go out. But when we go, I pray we go with that commission in mind that this Easter Sunday morning that we received a commission to go into the world just like Jesus. He said, just like the Father sent me, I'm sending you. What did Jesus do? Laid hands on the sick and they were healed. What did Jesus do? He, he ministered to them. He shared the good news with them. He shared the word with them. That's exactly what he did. And he said, that's what we're supposed to do. That's what we're supposed to do. But now listen, I wanna, I'm going to close with this. And he said, I send you to preach the forgiveness of sins, and people's sins will be forgiven. Now I'm reading out of the Passion Translation, and I want you to hear this next part of this verse because it opened this verse up to me like never before. And it says, but if you don't proclaim the forgiveness of their sins, they will remain guilty. And do you know why? Because they don't hear it. Do you know why we've got to proclaim the forgiveness of their sins? It's so that they will hear the word and so that they will repent of their sins and so that they will turn from their wicked ways. And I believe, as Susan said earlier, I believe that on this Resurrection Sunday, and when all this turns and we stand back up and we go out into the highways and the byways, the harvest is greater than it's ever been. And I believe we're going to see a great revival. And I believe we're going to have people, and if the devil only known, he'd have left America alone with the COVID-19. If the devil had only known, the Bible says he wouldn't have crucified the Lord, that he wouldn't have hung him on a tree. If the devil had only known, I believe he would have never allowed that virus to come to America. Because I believe from the bottom of my heart that there's going to be a bunch of, a bunch of believers rising up and going out into the highways and the byways and proclaiming Jesus as Lord like never before. Finding those that are hurting finding those that are emotionally distraught, finding those that, that are bound by fear and, and bound by, by disease and bound by financial burdens. And we're going to be able to proclaim the good news to them like never before. And I believe that there's a great revival. Amen. And a great awakening that is going to take place and it's going to happen in Jesus name yes it is amen yes it is amen father right now we just release your holy spirit upon them and into the homes and across these airways and father I thank you today that on this resurrection Sunday that we speak peace into their homes and I thank you today that we receive this commission. Go, preach forgiveness of sins so that all that are guilty may hear it and they may be saved. Father, I thank you right now. There are those that are watching that don't know Jesus as their Savior. This is all you got to do. All you have to do is say, God, I believe in my heart that Jesus died on the cross that he rose again from the dead. Jesus, 
I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart and be the Lord of my life. Jesus, I confess you now as my Lord. I thank you for saving me. Hallelujah. Now, if you just prayed that prayer, anytime. You can see this anytime. And you pray that prayer. And you just text next saved next steps. You just text that. Will y'all put that up for me? And uh, whatever it is, if y'all will put that up, there it is. What's next? Just text save to 43506. And it will give you the next steps for you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, darling. I love you. Happy Easter. Amen. Pastor Murray, would you come? We love you guys. And I can't wait to get back with all of you here where I can get a real hug from everybody. But I can tell you right now, God is faithful. And on this resurrection day, you rise up. You have been activated.